seconds walking around that bus crash scene. It was unlike anything I think I've ever experienced. It all started as a guided bus tour to one of Arizona's most popular tourist destinations. It ended, though, in a deadly crash just feet from the Grand Canyon. Our ABC 15 investigator spent months fighting to obtain critical details and pushing for accountability. Tonight, investigator Jennifer Kovaleski has exclusive interviews with the victims and the untold story of what happened. I was just thankful to still be alive. They say everyone responds differently to trauma. In terminal one for a bus rollover called I just remember him looking at me and saying, oh my God, my leg. And I looked at it and, um, and it was bad. These are the voices of survivors, including a family from Iowa. Some days are horrible. Some days we can't get off our chair, um, but we go on. Tragically, their 20-year-old granddaughter didn't make it. She was always the light of our lives. There needs to be accountability. The date was August 1st, 2023. Was without a doubt, I think, the worst day of all of our lives. All 56 passengers started their day on the Las Vegas Strip. Many like the Tershman family, vacationing from Maryland, taking photos in front of the famous welcome sign. It was great until it wasn't. Before boarding a tour bus they thought was safe on their way to the Skywalk at the Grand Canyon. We chose this tour because it, you could walk out on this acrylic walkway, but we never made it that far. The bus was almost to the parking lot. And all of a sudden, we went down into a ditch. We lost control and hit like a car too. Lots of people started screaming, and then it seemed as though we accelerated into the parking lot. Unknown injuries at this time. Angela Tershman captured these photos after escaping the bus. Like a disaster area. These images were taken by the Mojave County Medical Examiner's Office. The first time we're seeing the devastation up close. I kind of like blocked it out in a way. The bus rolled over before slamming into three parked cars. It, it, it was a lot. Everyone on board was injured. Uh, headed to Grand Canyon West. EMS You're listening to the emergency response. Flight for Life helicopters flew out eight of the most critical patients. It's going to be about three minutes out from the helipad now. Including Angela's 19-year-old son, Kyan. And I looked at my leg and it was like open and I saw like the bone and I guess everything in my leg. The images of his injuries are too graphic for television. This is a photo of Kyan being taken away on a stretcher. Watching him being wheeled to that helicopter was difficult. After countless surgeries, here's what Kyan's leg now looks like, and they're still waiting for the nerve to regenerate. Hoping and praying for Kyan's full or close to full recovery. They knew what happened, but for seven long months, they never knew why or what caused the crash until the ABC 15 investigators obtained this report. Angry? Sad? New tonight, the ABC 15 investigators have exclusive details about a fatal tour bus crash. When we aired our first report last summer, we knew it was a tragic accident. And the bus company, American Transportation Systems, had a history of safety violations. But our journey for accountability didn't stop there. We spent nearly five months fighting to get this crash report, a public record from the Arizona Department of Public Safety trying to get answers for everyone on this bus. It could have been prevented, but it wasn't. Here are the critical findings. The final crash report from the Arizona Department of Public Safety put it this way. The driver admitted to nodding off at the time of the collision, should not have been driving due to being over hours, and the bus should have been out of service because there was a tire not within regulation. Also telling from the report, it says the driver knew about the tire and failed to report it. A woman died and there was Kyan's injury and so many other people were injured that it just, I, it makes me angry, really, really. And we're not talking about a minor tire issue. The report says the tread on the right axle tire was so bad, steel was showing. There's no confirmation the tire contributed to the crash, but ultimately, crash investigators concluded the bus and the driver should have never been on the road. And both the bus company and bus driver, by all indications, ignored safety regulations. Do you think there needs to be accountability? The company 
being held accountable for what they did. For the last several months, we've been investigating the tour bus company involved in the crash. American Transportation Systems is based out of Southern California. We found the company has a history of multiple serious violations exceeding federal safety thresholds. The faulty equipment is the matter between life and death. According to Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration records, American Transportation operates more than 100 buses. The company's drivers were involved in two other injury crashes in California and have 18 violations for driving over hours or not keeping proper logs. Federal records also show the company's fleet had 141 maintenance violations in the last two years, many of those for tires with bad tread. Why are you doing this interview? If we can in any way help someone, uh, if there's laws that don't allow uh, mechanical issues on buses to be ignored. Duran Burgard's 20-year-old granddaughter Landry was the one killed in the crash. Landry was, she's our only grandchild. Her family is still not ready to talk about that day last summer, but recently filed this lawsuit against the bus company and bus driver claiming negligence. When it gets to be a bad day, then we have to remind ourselves that we have to live like Landry because she would want us to be happy. She says three generations boarded that bus, and this is the last photo they have together at the Hoover Dam. Yeah, that was the day before the accident. Nothing will ever bring Landry back, but this family now wants accountability, and they are not alone. It could have been prevented, and it was just carelessness. They want the bus company held responsible for the trauma they're now having to live through all because they boarded a tour bus they thought was safe. If there aren't consequences, then what's to stop this bus company from continuing to do it this way, where we ignore safety regulations? You should also know the 68-year-old driver was arrested right after this crash on suspicion of manslaughter but he was later released after the county attorney chose not to file charges. The Federal Safety Administration cited the driver for fatigued driving, but did not issue any civil penalties related to this crash. American Transportation declined our request for an on-camera interview. The company's attorney said the matter is in litigation and we respect those that were injured and the family and friends that have been affected. And we aren't going to stop here. We plan to continue looking into this company and other safety concerns. I'm investigator Jennifer Kovaleski, ABC 15, Arizona. Thank you, Jennifer. If you want the investigators to look into something, email us at investigators at abc15.com or call that number on your screen.